Well, hello everybody. I'm in the van and we're uh, just outside McDonald's. Steve has uh, filled himself full of uh, Mackey's breakfast, and uh, I've got Kev here. That he, he's had a um, a bacon roll, haven't you? But yes. he but he did order a bap. But uh, you know, he got a bacon roll. So uh, I'll just show you them all. There's Kev, Cragsy, and we've got the retro bait in the front, Steve. Say hello, hello. And Lauren, <laughs> nice to see you. And we're on our way to uh, where are we going? Yorkshire Air Museum. Museum. Yorkshire Air Museum. Museum. By Sheffield. Yeah. Oh, why are we going to Sheffield? Are we going to see there? Jeanette Pickering and Pixie. Oh, what? Well, lemon drizzle. Lemon drizzle. Oh, great. Really looking forward <laughs> to that then. So uh, we'll see you when we get a bit further then. Born steward at the Yorkshire Air Museum. Um, Yorkshire Air Museum was originally RAF Elvington mm -hmm. and was a bomber station in the Second World War. Originally in about 1940, early 40s, 77 Squadron were here flying Whitley's. Um, <laughs> they left in 1944 at some point and 346 and 347 squadrons arrived. They were the only two French Air Force heavy bomber squadrons to be based in this country. Um, they couldn't be based in their own country because the Nazis had taken over France. Um, they were based here for the rest of the war, flying Halifaxes. They had uh, really bad losses, um, as did most of the bomber squadrons around here. And we have a Halifax in the main hangar here in the T2 hangar which is the reason why it's here because of the Halifax link. Half of the Halifax is done in French colours, the other side is RAF colours and that's because it was a French site so there's a lot of French links with the site. Um, then the war came and the site moved over to uh, a maintenance site um, with the RAF that eventually changed and at some point in the 50s the Americans arrived. The idea was to change the site into this when the Cold War was happening and they were going to base their big B-52s here. They lengthened the runway. We've got a runway which is nearly two miles long um, and a very large concrete pan. They did all that and but then they never arrived. They never brought the aircraft here. Um, the aircraft, the, run, the site was then not used much. It was used for um, train for for um, training purposes, and Buccaneers were flown around here. Area of Church Fenton used it as a emergency landing site. It was also at one point used as an emergency uh, landing ground should the need arise for the shuttle and also for Concord. The site was run down probably um, late 80s, early 90s, and not a lot happened to it. Um, mid 80s, a group of people started getting together and trying to restore various parts of it, starting with the control tower. And in about 85, I think it was, the site opened to the public as a museum. Um, a lot of the buildings, most of the buildings are original, not necessarily in the right place. <coughs> The chapel, for example, is from an airfield which was just down the road from here at Acaster Melvis. Um, and all the fittings inside are from Scampton, RAF Scampton. Um, but a lot of the buildings, as I say, are original, not necessarily in the right place. Control Tower certainly original and is a Grade 2 listed building. We have a selection of aircraft on site um, from very early days. Um, there was a 
a Yorkshireman called George Cayley, who was probably the first man in 1849 to understand the principles of how an aircraft flights, how an aircraft flies, with the various sort of forces that have to occur with it, sort of that make it get into the air. And in 1853, he invented what he called the governable parachute. Uh, this was the first aircraft, as such, that flew, um, that was heavier than air and was manned. Um, his coachman flew it, although he wasn't very happy about it at the time. So we've got that, and then leading on from there, we've got a Wright Flyer, which was the American plane flown by the, the Wright brothers in, I can't remember the year for that one, um, a bit later on. Um, various of the World War One aircraft, um, a B-2C and an Avro the aircraft which have been used or have been shown in Paris and one down in London last year for the RAF Centenary. Um, we have a Halifax which is the pride of the collection, there's only two complete in the world and one is here. Um, it's designated Friday the 13th which was one of the most successful bombers in the Second World War, it, uh, it did more, more missions than any other, um, although it's interesting that it's, it's covered in, good, in bad luck signs, it's got an upside down horseshoe on it, and the Grim Reaper's also on the side. Um, various other aircraft, Cold War aircraft, Nimrod, um, we've got a Victor, a Canberra, um, and a selection of Lightning, um, three Buccaneers, two tornadoes, which are probably the more recent ones. I think that's about a summary of them all. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not incredibly knowledgeable, but I do love stuff like this. It will keep on running for quite a long period of time as well. If you went to the back, you could see the exhaust turbine at the back mm. rotating as well. So that's just one central shaft. That's just one. The principle is that draws the air in, hmm. right? The air goes in under pressure, goes into combustion chambers where it's mixed with fuel. Hmm. An explosion occurs, the gases are forced out the back, but before they go out of the exhaust outlet at the back, they go past another turbine, which is situated at the back end. Hmm. With the gases going through that turbine, it spins it, which is connected to the central shaft, which spins the front turbine faster. Mm. So by adding additional fuel in the combustion chambers, or the mixing chambers, what happens is that you create a bigger bang, more exhaust out the back, spins it faster, spins this faster, and it's the whole system is gradually feeding itself. Feeding itself. Yeah. When you want to reduce your throttles, you pull your throttles back, reduces the fuel mixture, slows the actual engine up again.
you think to your visit here at the Yorkshire Museum? Oh, it's great. Uh, it's quite interesting. It's great just seeing all of the flames, especially the ones that are still working. Yeah. yeah. So where where are you both from then? Um, Wales. Wales. Where about in Wales? Um, Bangor.
concludes our visit to the Yorkshire Air Museum. Uh, definitely going to come again because uh, we've only had a couple of hours here and I think you need a full day to look around all the hangars, the facilities here. <laughs> and they have special events on during the uh, year. So uh, if you go over to the website, the Yorkshire Air Museum, uh, it tells you all about all the events and tells you a bit about the museum. Hope uh, that uh, you've enjoyed this uh, short film that I've put on for you and that uh, you'll support my channel. Uh, it's Eagle VP and I'll see you on the next video or live stream. So bye everyone for now from the Yorkshire Air Museum.